Okay. So this might be the last video I do in this room. Uh, I'm moving to a different house just down the road, but uh, when it's finally set up, the studio should be better and nicer, a bit bigger. So I'm looking forward to doing some uh, videos when that's all set up, but for now this should probably be the last video that I do in a while, uh, probably in sometime mid to early next year. This one I've actually been thinking about for some time, and I, I was going to do it at a later date, but I thought, look, I want to do it before I leave here. Um, this is probably a piece of information that is most suitable for people who like myself, have a smaller studio, do a lot of recording of virtual instruments, plugins, that sort of thing. Don't get me wrong, there's no substitute for the real thing, a real amplifier. But when you've only got a certain amount of space and sometimes you want a sound from an amplifier you don't have, virtual instruments can be a, a good alternative. The only problem is when you record uh, an instrument, and you're trying to get the right sound, often you're hearing it through your headphones or you're hearing it through the speakers, but you're hearing it while you're playing your instrument. It's hard to get a good idea of how that instrument is actually going to sound once it's been recorded because as you're recording it, listening to it, you're hearing the sounds in the room. You're hearing the, the pick or the drum or the whatever hitting it. It's hard to get an idea of what the actual sound's going to be. And you want to record as close to the sound that you want. Even though you can do a lot of stuff after it's recorded to make it sound the way you want, it's always best to try and get the sound perfect or as close to perfect before you do any other alterations to it. What I've found, and it took me way too long to learn this, is there's kind of a, a weird cousin of what's called reamping. And the idea is you can record your sound through an amp and you record that sound, but you record a clean channel just to keep off to the side and then later on if you decide you want a different sound you can put that clean channel through an amplifier a different amplifier and then tweak it to get the sound you want that's a common standard practice with a lot of uh, studios but what i've found is doing reamping with model amplifiers what you can do is you can do the reamping but then put it through the model amplifier and tweak it where you're only hearing it coming out of the speakers and then you can figure out what the exact sound you want is. And as long as that model amplifier has a corresponding software uh, plugin, like Line 6, for example, then you can go back to your, uh, your modeled amplifier in the pedal that you're using and tweak the knobs to match the desired sound. Once you have that sound, then you can go back in and record it, and you're basically recording the exact sound you want. And you would be surprised at how different the sound you hear when you're recording is compared to the actual sound you want. There have been quite a lot of times where I have thought I had the right sound. Um, and I was like, yep, that's it, played it and recorded it. And then I've gone back and played it through the speakers. I'm just like, that is so that is so more bassy than what I wanted. Or, or there's way too much treble. Or there's no mid. Or, or like the attack is off. Or it just doesn't work in the mix. And so... Doing this way, which I'll show you now, is um, a great way to actually record the first time um, the sound you want. Reamping is a great way of figuring out the actual tone you want before you try and record it. Uh, it allows you to be the sound engineer as well as the musician and to separate the two in time and space where you're not playing the guitar and listening to the sound, where you're not uh, trying to see if, if the, is it too trebly or would it sound different if I wasn't hearing the actual acoustic strings being struck next to me. It's a great way to figure out the actual sound you want. Okay, so we have our two tracks set up here. I just created two tracks and the only difference is I'm changing the inputs. So the first track is input one and that's going to be the saturated sound and that's with all the effects and input two uh, or track two is going to have input eight in it so that's just going to record the dry uh, signal of the guitar in with no effects or any processing on top now we have to arm both the tracks and now we're going to press record so while well, it looks like we're recording two tracks at the same time which we are one track the one at the top is going to be um, fully uh, saturated with sound and the track at the bottom is just going to be so 
So the track at the bottom has no effects in it whatsoever, and the track at the top is saturated with sound. So I'm going to have to apologise for the uh, popping. I've got something going on with my sound, but I can't be bothered to change it really. But it'll, you'll still get the idea. So the top track, you can see it's much bigger, it's much more amplified. That's because the sound is um, uh, filled with the amp model and, and uh, all that sort of stuff. And the other one's just a dry sound. So let's just play the top one. <laughs> Okay, so it's a fine sound, whatever, but um, now we're going to listen to just the dry signal. <laughs> So as you can hear there, that's just the dry guitar signal, there's no processing, there's no amp model, there's no sort of gain from the amp model in there making distortion, whatever. But that is the signal that we're now going to pass through Podfarm, which is the, the digital, the app version of what's on any Line 6 uh, product. Um, so mono. And now that signal, I'm going to pass that through a model amplifier, the application of a model amplifier, and we're going to start tweaking the knobs. And now you can do this because it's recorded. We can um, put this on a loop and just keep playing it and playing it, adjusting the knobs until we get what we want. Now you see here it says platinum there. That is because I have a Line 6 uh, device, my PodX3 Live, plugged in. Um, if you would take it out and then click on that, it would say trial or something like that version but any uh, line 6 product uh, has an inbuilt key in it so when you connect it you do get um, uh, advanced privileges access to app models and all that sort of stuff all right so let's get rid of that reverb for a second just focus on the amp sound what I like to do usually is uh, get everything to 50% Just so we're starting from a sort of a blank slate. And I'll turn the volume all the way up because this amp model is not a very loud one. Okay, so yep, let's just max that drive out because I do want a distorted sound, but as you can tell, this always sounds quite different than that last setting I was using. Get a bass up there. Okay, yeah. Want to fill out that bottom area a little bit. A little beefy. <coughs> and you can you can put uh, dynamics on there, such as uh, compression. Um, so I'll use this red comp. And now the way the compression interacts with the amp changes the sound again. So you muck around with it for a bit. So it just sounds and feels right. And now that's made things a little more beefy, so I'm actually going to dial back the bass. And of course you can never do this while playing the guitar and when you're doing it in the same room you'd hear just the guitar chinging back at you so you wouldn't actually know how bright or sharp or how much presence or lack of presence there is. And now the amp is a bit close so I'm going to push it back. You can hear it's getting more of a room sound to it now and I just prefer the 57. That's a much closer sound to what I'm after. So now I can go back to the Pod X3 Live and dial all those into my signal chain and record that sound directly in. 
and then the post-processing is going to be minimal. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. Simply because it's changed the way I record uh, drastically and it saves me a lot of time. I can now fiddle around with my settings, listen to it back, then go down, put in the exact settings that I want, record it again, and the main time it saves is in post-production. When you've already got your recording down, you don't have to fiddle with the EQ or the compression or a lot of stuff that much because you've already got the 80 to 90% of the sound the way you want it before any editing comes into place. Again, as all my videos, I wish I had seen some video like this in the past. It would have saved me so much time and it really does make the recording process a lot more enjoyable and you have a lot more time to do the things you want to do as opposed to spending 10% of the time, if that, recording your songs and 90% trying to make them sound the way you want after you've recorded it. So yeah, best principles, get the recording right the first time, get the sound correct before you try and mix it, before you try and change it, and before you try and get the sound that you actually want. You should be starting closer to the sound that you actually want from the beginning. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you, just uh, how to reamp your sound in your own pedal so you can get closer to the sound you want when it comes to mixing your recording later on. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to say this is going to be the last video I do out of this room. It's starting to get messy already. I'm getting ready to pack it up and move to a new place. I will stick some photos up here of what my new music room currently looks like. <laughs> and I hope it gets... Uh, I hope it improves. I hope it gets better really soon because at the moment, oh my goodness. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's all done, but probably won't do another video for three or four months at least. Uh, probably, probably a new video in the new year sometime. But okay, thanks. Bye.